Hello everyone, I am Narendra. In this video, I will discuss about surface atoms and surface energy. In the macroscopic objects like bulk crystal, the fraction of surface atoms is small and so their influence is weak. However, if you reduce the size to nano level, which are nearly all surfaces. At nano level, atoms on a solid surface possesses fewer nearest neighbors or coordination numbers, thus have dangling or unsatisfied bonds exposed to the surface. Because of the dangling bonds on the surface, surface atoms are under inwardly directed force and the bond distance between the surface atoms and the subsurface atoms is smaller than between the interior atoms. When a solid particles are very small, such a decrease in bond length between surface atoms and interior atoms becomes significant. The lattice constants of the entire solid particle show an appreciable reduction. So at nano level, the surface atoms are predominant. But if you increase the particle size from nano to bulk, the amount of surface atoms drastically reduces. So at bulk form, the particles contain almost negligible surface atoms. So the extra energy possessed by the surface atoms described as surface energy or surface free energy. The so surface energy can be estimated by multiplying the number of dangling bonds, bond strength and surface atomic density. To understand clearly about surface energy, let us consider a rectangular solid material that is divided into four pieces. On the newly created surfaces, each atom is located in an asymmetric environment and will move towards the interior due to the breaking of bonds at the surface. An extra force is required to pull the surface atoms back to its original position. So it possesses high surface energy as it can be estimated from this equation. This relation only gives a rough estimation of the true surface energy of the solid surface and is only applicable to solids with rigid structure where no surface relaxation occurs. The total surface energy increases with overall surface area which is in strongly dependent on the dimension of the material. This table indicates how the specific surface area and total surface energy of 1 gram of sodium chloride vary with particle size. As the particle size decreases, the surface area and surface energy predominantly increases. I hope this will give some basic idea of surface atoms and surface energy. Now we try to understand how surface energy reduces at nano level. In general, the formation of bonds between atoms in a solid is accompanied by a decrease in the surface energy. For a given surface with a fixed surface area, the surface energy can be reduced through surface relaxation, surface restructuring, surface adsorption and composition segregation. In surface relaxation, the surface atoms or ions shift inwardly which occur more readily in liquid phase than in solid surface due to rigid structure. To understand it clearly, let us take the surface atoms on an atomic flat surface as an example, assuming that the crystal has a simple cubic structure. The surface atoms are linked with one atom directly beneath and the other surrounding surface atoms. It is reasonable to consider each chemical bond acting as an attractive force. All the surface atoms are under the influence of a net force pointing inwardly and perpendicular to the surface. Understandably, under such a force, the distance between the surface atomic layer and the subsurface atomic layer would be smaller than that inside the bulk. 
though the structure of the surface atomic layer remains unchanged. In addition, the distance between the atomic layers under the surface would be also reduced. Such surface relaxation has been well established. In other case, the surface atoms may also shift laterally relative to the subsurface atomic layer and they relax with reduction in the lattice dimension. For bulk materials, such a reduction in the lattice dimension is too small to exhibit any appreciable influence on the overall crystal lattice constant and therefore can be ignored. However, such an inward and lateral shift of surface atoms would result in a reduction of the surface energy. Next one is surface restructuring. Surface restructuring takes place through combining surface dangling bonds into straight new chemical bonds. For example, if a surface atom has more than one broken bonds, surface restructuring is a possible mechanism to reduce the surface energy. The broken bonds from neighboring surface atoms combine to form a highly strained bond. The surface restructuring can be found in 100 surface of silicon crystals. In this way, the surface energy is reduced through surface restructuring. In another way to reduce the surface energy is chemical or physical adsorption on solid surface which can effectively lower the surface energy. For example, if you see the surface of diamond and silicon, the surface of diamond is terminated with hydrogen and that of silicon is covered with hydroxyl groups. This takes place before restructuring. So these are considered as chemical adsorption. Another approach to reduce the surface energy is composition segregation. In bulk crystals, composition segregation is not significant since the activation energy required for solid state diffusion is high and the diffusion distance is also large. But in case of nanostructures, the phase segregation may play a significant role in the reduction of surface energy due to short diffusion distance. In this uh, composition segregation, the impurities and defects are readily to be repelled from the interior to the surface and reduce the surface energy. So in this way, the surface energy can be reduced. I hope this will give some understanding on how surface energy reduces at nano level through these processes. Next time we will see with other discussion.